And if you look at the rings in this depiction, what, what you can see is that the C15 ring, uh, the, the, the C-terminal helices are tightly packed, and this looks like a very stable, uh, a very stable arrangement, whereas uh, in, in the case of the, uh, of the bovine or human enzyme, uh, the helices are not so well packed. There are holes, uh, and you can see the inner ring of helices, whereas you cannot in this case. Now, this, this uh, is a paradox, uh, it, it, it appeared to be a paradox, uh, because uh, this enzyme must, ro must resist a much greater rotational torque uh, than, than this one, and yet the ring itself looks inherently uh, less stable. And th this bothered me a lot until I remembered uh, that in, in the C protein in, in, in man and in cows, uh, this lysine residue in the sequence is actually not lysine, it's trimethyl lysine. And so uh, what uh, I suggested was that this would prevent uh, phospholipids with a head group from binding in this region, and the only uh, lipid that could bind uh, it is shown here, cardiolipin. Uh, and uh, so the idea is that cardiolipin would help to stabilize the, ling, the ring uh, by forming these bridging uh, structures. And cardiolipin has long been known to be essential uh, for uh, the activity of the ATPase. And I, I now am beginning to think that actually the, 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 the rotary element is actually the complex uh, between uh, the C-ring uh, and, and, and cardiolipin. So we're, we're now uh, trying to get experimental evidence by solving structures with, with bound uh, cardiolipin to, to, to support this idea and also, of course, to measure the affinity of cardiolipin for the ring. But what I then did was to compare sequence, all, all the vertebrate sequences that I, I could found, uh, find for this protein. And to my astonishment, they were essentially identical uh, from uh, man uh, all, all the way down uh, to here where there are uh, ray fin fissures. Um, so this is the the glutamate, this is a lysine residue which we knew was tri for, uh, uh, trimethylated in man uh, and, and in cows. And the, I've not mentioned these, these three residues here, these alanine residues. We think that these alanine residues are essential uh, with, uh, for the formation uh, of, a, of a C8 ring. Um, they are in the inner ring of helices which have to be very tightly packed. And you can see, if you look at the sequences, they're very rich in glycine residues uh, for that reason. And if, if you change these alanine residues to larger hydrophobic residues, for, to valine, for example, you cannot uh, form uh, a, a, a ring as small as uh, C8. So we think these alanine residues are diagnostic uh, of the uh, C8 ring. And so, for example, in the case of Saccharomyces, um, where it, the, the C-ring forms, uh, there are valine residues, I think, in, in, in two of these positions. Um, but then <coughs> I, I started uh, to look at uh, the invertebrate species, and what I found there, again, was that the lysine residue was maintained, and in almost all species, so this goes all the way down uh, to, to, to sponges, um, it, it, except in this case here, the, the alanine residues are maintained as well. And so we think that it's highly likely that the C8 rings persist not only through, uh, throughout vertebrates, where there are 50,000 species, uh, but throughout invertebrates, where there are at least 2 million uh, species. So we think that all of multicellular life uses the C8 ring and only pays 3.3 protons, where, whereas unicellular life pays more energy to make an ATP and we think that the differences reflect the circumstances under which the organism has to survive. So it, 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 it is a consequence of them having to live perhaps under more harsh conditions where they're not able to generate such a high proton motive force and such a high torque. And so they, they have to, the payoff is they have to pay more protons to rotate, uh, rotate the ring. Um, now, that if, if you compare the sequences, so this is the, the human sequence at the top, uh, with yeast sequences and other uh, unicellular uh, organisms, those relationships break down. The alanines have disappeared, um, and in many cases, the lysine is not present as well. 
There is a, this is Saccharomyces cerevisiae. There is a lysine uh, in this position in Saccharomyces, but it's not trimethylated. So what we're doing as part of pursuing this idea uh, is to isolate ATPases from many species now. So you can see a range of them here, uh, man, cow, sheep, pig, uh, and, and so forth. Uh, and at, at the end, uh, there's, there's a fly. So the, these are actually maggots that are sold uh, for fishermen's bait that we simply mashed up and isolated ATPs. Now we're able to do this because we've developed a very simple one-step procedure for obtaining ATPs which uses the, 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 the very high specificity of the inhibitor protein. So we simply mash up uh, whatever the organism is or the, or the organ is um, and throw in the inhibitor protein with some ATP, it forms an inhibited complex and we can pull that out because we put an affinity tag at the end of the inhibitor protein and it works, works beautifully. And so we worked our way uh, now through many uh, species. We've isolated the C protein, we've me measured its mass. And in every single case we've looked at, and there are many more uh, than here, there's an additional mass of 42 uh, corresponding to trimethylation. Uh, so here is the, the tree of life. Uh, the red branches uh, are, the, are the ones uh, where there are uh, C protein sequences uh, available. So I've included them in those tables I've just shown you. And in this whole branch here, the vertebrate branch, we've looked at all these sub uh, uh, examples in all these sub-branches and found that the, that the C protein uh, is, is trimethylated. Uh, we, we're about to look at uh, echinoderms and, 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 and sponges. And we've looked at some uh, insects now, and they're, they're all uh, uh, trim trimethylated. Um, <coughs> so... We, th we think that this situation obtains through this part uh, of the tree of life. We're not sure uh, yet about uh, land plants, but it does not obtain uh, in, in unicellular life where, they, as I've said, they pay different, am different amounts of energy to make their ATP depending on their physiological circumstances. Um, not sure what I was going to say there. So, th so the key remaining question is how do the C ring and the A protein uh, in, interact and we uh, with John Rubenstein uh, in, in Toronto who's a former PhD student of mine um, we've continued to pursue um, or John has continued to pursue uh, the analysis of the ATPase complex using electron microscopy cryo electron microscopy he's pushed and developed the methods and has now produced this 17 angstrom structure in which the, the boundaries between the different subunits are quite evident. And so one can uh, quite readily cover, color in these segments and know that they correspond to the proteins that we've seen at much higher resolution uh, in X-ray crystallographic structures. Now, the, the, the most interesting part is the A protein here, uh, shown in light blue, and, and, and how it interacts with the C ring. And contrary to what had been thought, there is no intimate em embrace uh, between the A protein and the C ring, and it appears to contact it at a single point only. So it it's, looks like uh, a, 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 a point in an electrical motor delivering protons uh, to the to the C, uh, uh, the, the carboxylate uh, in the C, uh, via uh, uh, channels or half channels uh, in 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 the A protein. So clearly, we need to determine the structure of the A protein, and we're trying to do this in the context of, of an intact enzyme rather than uh, solving the individual protein itself so that we know uh, what the molecular interactions are and what the path of the prot uh, protons will be. And so th this is the, 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 the problem. How, how do you determine the structure uh, of the, the intact enzyme? And the, the, here is, is the problem. Um, <coughs> this ring rotates against the A protein at a very high rate. So this interface between the A protein and the C ring is inherently uh, unstable but you want to keep them in position in order to grow crystals in order to resolve um, uh, relevant structures and so we think we now know how to do this so uh, and how to keep the enzyme coupled and the secret is certainly to keep phospholipids native phospholipids associated with the complex and not to remove uh, not to remove them and we've developed ways of determining without uh, doing reconstitution experiments whether they 
remain in association uh, with each other. We've isolated the enzyme now from a wide range of species and we're studying how, how, to, how to crystallize them. So I hope to be able to show that at some point in the not too distant future. So th that's where we are today in solving this ex extraordinary, uh, the, the, the structure and mechanism of this extraordinary machine. Paul once called it a beautiful uh, machine in a review that, that he wrote. And it just uh, remains to acknowledge recent uh, postdoctoral fellows and students who've done this recent work. Uh, so uh, uh, Katia Baranova uh, helped to compare the 43 structures. John Basin uh, did the mutational work on the inhibitor protein. Anna Duncan uh, did MD simulations to look at um, cardiolipin binding to the ring. I've not shown that to you, but there's a clear preference in MD simulations for cardiolipin <coughs> binding to the ring over other phospholipids. Scott Ferguson solved the bacterial structure. David Rees, uh, the, the, the structure of the peripheral stalk of the enzyme. Graham Robinson, uh, the yeast F1, IF1 structure. Tom Walpole is isolating ATPase as we speak from uh, more and more weird uh, invertebrates. And then Martin Montgomery, Mike Runswick, and Ian Watt but, uh, uh, contributed to all aspects of this work. And Ian solved the structure uh, of the bovine F1C ring. And then uh, I've collaborated with various people. Alan, Alan Robinson helped uh, with the MD uh, simulations with the C ring. All the crystallography has been done in collaboration with uh, Andrew Leslie at the Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge where I used to work. I've mentioned uh, John Rubenstein at the Hospital for Sick Kids in Toronto. Uh, the, the bacterial complex uh, has been st is being studied in collaboration with Greg Cook, University of Dunedin in New Zealand, and David Palmer also from New Zealand uh, has uh, participated uh, in, in uh, studying the, the trimethylation of the ring. So I, I want to thank you once again for inviting me to come and give this uh, lecture today. It, 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 it is a great privilege and a great honor uh, to address you. So I, I thank you very much for having invited me.